Um, this game that's being played here right now is um, called the Old Sticks. And the reason why they're talking to the old sticks is they they got the, the wooden sticks, and um, and the current lacrosse lacrosse sticks that are being used uh, around the country, the world today is all plastic. You know, I call them uh, Tupperware, and the. Uh, and the stick that's out there that the, those men are using right now are, are our tradition. Every, uh, every year, the first game that's played at Onondaga is uh, a medicine game. And the medicine game is, uh, is for the players, and for the game itself, and anybody who's gonna be picking up that stick because you can get hurt, you can get hurt in that game, and, and uh, they always have this this medicine game. And there's a great uh, kind of a uh, unknown to to our our brothers from across the water. And every time you say medicine game, they want to know well, what what is it? What is it? What, what is it? How does that work? What is the medicine? You know. And so I'll, I'll just explain a little bit about that. Uh, it's the old style. There's two stakes, one for the goals down there and two stakes over here. Uh, there's uh, there's uh, one guy on this side watching the, the goal and one guy on the other side, but there's no referees. And, uh, and the uh, the game is uh, is chosen by uh, the we have two houses on on our nation. Uh, how we work politically and uh, spiritually. All all of our uh, interactions are these two houses, uh, kind of similar to your Democrats and Republicans, you know. But no, they're not similar like that at all. <laughs> No, but there are two houses, and uh, there are certain families in each house. So if you're going to make your team up, that's your team comes from the two houses. Now, just to illustrate that, uh, uh, I'm a, I'm a wolf, and uh, but I've been uh, borrowed. I've been borrowed by the turtles for years. I've all been sitting on the council and the turtle side. You can do that, but I never gave up. Uh, I never gave up my my uh, clan when I was adopted, and um, so my clan mother said, "That's all right." She says, "But what that means is that where you're sitting, your position is always going to be. Uh, it's not permanent. You know, it can be changed." She said, "If you." If you change your, your your clan, and then you to the turtle, then you're sitting there. So you be there. So that these uh, appointed titles are for life. So I'm temporary. I'm a temporary uh, turtle, and I've been sitting there 55 years now. But it's temporary, and. Uh, And these uh, two teams are made up from this house and the other house, long house and the mud house, we call them. And that will determine. So when my son Rex was big enough to, to play in the game, he couldn't wait to, to play in the medicine game. And so uh, our, our game was uh, decided by that. And also, you know, the other the other teams that we make was old guys against young guys, and that's that's what the, that's what the uh, people like the best. They like the old guys against the young guys. But anyway, uh, at this particular game, it was Rex's first time to play in a medicine game. He standing next to me. And I said to him, what are you doing here? 
He said, didn't wish to play. I said, I said, you're, you're ill, you're on the other side. So I saw him play against him. And, uh, and that shows you some kind of the complexity of this system that we have. And then, of course, uh, the old guys, the young guys, he's still over there. But now he's on this side. <laughs> we get to be an old guy. But anyway, um, whoever calls that game, any one of our our people on the nation, for whatever reason, we don't question the reason. That's their reason. Be spiritual. It could be very sick. It could be whatever it is. They ask for a game, and uh, we we have to respond. So at that time, all the players that take part are, well, I would just, I'd say they're spiritual beings, basically. That's the elevation of the game to that level, because it's, it's totally spiritual. And it's old, it's the original style. And so, there's a gathering, the time is set, and as soon as the time is set, then we have to uh, talk to the women because the women are, are part of this, uh, I would call it a society. It's, uh, this game has a society, like we have many societies, actually, medicine societies, but this game is one of them. And the women have a big part in this game. Uh, the medicine game, they have to prepare the food, they do a lot. Um, to, so it's a kind of a community, big community event. And then, uh, and whoever shows up, shows up. You know, that's, that's who's going to play that day for whatever reason. But uh, players like the game too. And you better not show up with any of that Tupperware. You better come with a real stick. <laughs> you know, because the, the stick itself has uh, qualities. Now this is, this is uh, well you could put a net on here. And uh, usually made from, from hickory, but I've seen sticks made from ash as well, but mostly hickory. And uh, this stick represents uh, all, all the trees in the world here. When you're in that game, you're carrying all the trees in the world. That's how broad this game is. And then the net is made in a stick made from leather, deer. And the deer in our cosmology is the leader of all animals in the world. And so that, that represents all the animals in the world. That's what you're carrying out there with that stick. That's why they call it the old sticks. That's why they haven't this came here to keep it going. Just let you guys know a little bit the importance of that stick. You know, Nike and Tupperware, that don't cut it. That's a dead stick that has no life to it. It's all plastic. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. But here, yeah, and so that, that's why they, they're playing this old stick, just to keep a reminder to people what it was. And it was all the way up to 1970 when all the games were played in this country were played with wooden sticks. But commerce took over, you know. And uh, I remember that battle. We, we tried hard to keep the wooden stick in the game. And, uh, commerce was too, too strong for us. And they made all kinds of promises. They said, oh, six, two dollars worth of, of uh, two dollars worth of plastic to make this stick. But they still charge you 120 bucks a stick. It only costs two. But I'll tell you, to make this stick, to carve that stick, that takes a lot of work. And it takes a lot of, uh, and, you know, a young stick maker, I call him young. I knew his father, his father was a stick maker. He's got gray hair now, time passes. But uh, he makes a good stick. 
I, I think he makes a better stick than his dad did. But it was his father was the one that, that really uh, brought the stick making back. But we've always had carvers here. They had their own quality of stick in all the Six Nations. Uh, when I played, when I was playing, I always used a Logan stick. And, uh, and he knew my recommendations. And I called him, I said, hey, I broke my stick. Okay. And he'd get a stick ready for me right away. He knew exactly uh, what, what I needed. And uh, he's from the Six Nations. But I always played with a Logan stick. And, uh, and you had players like that. They wanted, they wanted this stick, they wanted this stick. They, and so you have these stick makers. They all have their own quality, they're all great. And, uh, and although the, the plastic has taken over commercially the game itself, you see this stick. Everybody seems to want one now. They want the wooden stick. And I think that um, that quality that's in the medicine game uh, is moves into the, the uh, secular game that you see out here, um, and that there's a there's a brotherhood to the players that's just uh, I don't see in any other sport, or so-called sport. But we don't call this game a sport; it's a game. It's a heavier heavier uh, dimension than, than a sport. It's not a sport for us. It's, it's part of our cosmology. It's part of our history. It's part of our life. And, uh, and so it's gone around the world now. But the, uh, but the essence of it, the witness stick, and this young man over here with with his uh, stick, he's keeping that quality. It takes a lot of work to go out in the woods and find that tree, that tree that you're gonna have no, no, uh, it can't be any any bumps or burrows in it. It's got a good straight stick that you're gonna carve out. How many you can get out of one, one tree. So you gotta cut it down and carry it. And if you wanna pick up a, a 10 foot, trunk a tree and try to walk away with it. That's what he does, even his age. That's what it takes just to begin, and then you gotta carve the sticks, and there's many famous carvers of sticks, you know. And uh, from Round Points up in, in Aquasasne, you know, and the Logans of Cataraugus, they, they all have their stick makers and the quality. And so that part of the game is the uh, reason why this game is played here, just to remind people the importance of the stick itself. And my discussion here is to enlighten you just a little bit as to the depth of this, this game out here. You know, uh, pretty hard to, to in, in, implant that kind of an idea in a, a young man that comes out of uh, one of those elite schools. They don't have that background. It's hard to get that kind of a relationship. And so, uh, almost every one of these players that, that play this game, and when, you're, when you're buried, you take your stick with you. That's, that goes with you. Because the first thing you're gonna do on the other side is play. You're gonna be the captain that day. And, and so uh, it's something really kind of look forward to, actually. I mean, uh, I won't need this again. I'll be back on the field. <laughs> so just to give you the, the depth of it, the idea of it, how, how uh, important the spiritual side of it is and how it's kept uh, our, our nations together and how it's been... Uh, even during the Revolutionary War, they put their guns down and they played games. Oppositions. During the Revolutionary War. It shows you how strong that, that game is. And uh, 
Kachi Kwa'i. Kachi Kwa'i, you know, that, that's uh, Onondaga uh, name for the game, Kachi Kwa'i. It means they, they pump hips. So when the, when the university took the hip check out of the game, I says, hey, what the heck? Took the hip check out of the game. That was a name of the game <laughs> for us. Just goes to show you how how far away you can get, and uh, the players, Onchikwa Ace, that's what they call them, those men out there right now, Onchikwa Ace, and the uh, and the Mohawks they have a different word for them. They were Aladun. They were Aladun. They were Aladun. And they talk about the stick itself with a net. And I'm um, not certain how the Cayugas or uh, Santa Cruz say that, but they all, but the game is the same. And uh, we can play this medicine game for, for a person or for the nation or for the world, for peace. And that's, uh, that's where there was some conflict, you know, the, uh, this, this has a varieties of, of, uh, of game around the country. Everybody played some version of this. But the long stick game, the one you see there, that belongs to the Haudenosaunee. That belongs to the, the Iroquois, they call us. French call us Iroquois just to clarify that. And the English always called us six nations or five nations. And uh, I think a lot of people call us something else anytime they <laughs> think about it. <laughs> but Haudenosaunee is our proper name. And it means people of the longhouse. So I think the importance of the wooden stick and I'm always pleased to see as you look over here you see the pile of sticks there that it's carrying on and um, and then the world games and the many games that I've, I've uh, taken part in there is that element of uh, spirituality that our brothers pick up with us they don't quite understand it but they they, there's a reverence to it that they they like they like that and the players like that and I guess that's a proper word for it there's, there's kind of a reverence to the game itself that's uh they pick that up I know they sense it and so uh, I'm glad you guys came out today and uh, we've had a beautiful weekend down on the nation there was a they've been playing for the past three days here uh, we had 32 teams in competition down there and Israel had a team there Czech Republic had a team there England had a team you know there, we had four or five international teams in the Philippines there's a stand-up, there's a player right here. Philippines. And it gives you an idea how far this this game has traveled. And it's gonna go further. But with it traveling and with this game should go the respect of the people who originated it. And um, although we've been written out of your history, although, uh, you know, I know we've been written out of your history because I'm a history professor at the University of Buffalo. It's 37 years and we had to do our own books. You just don't know about us. You're not told about us. You know that we're here, you know that our name, but you don't know anything about us. This is this simple game here, this complex. And there's much, much, much more to us and much more to the over, say, 500 
67 different nations with relations to the federal government today. There's 567 different names out there. You know about the Cherokees, everybody's a Cherokee. And, and you know about the Apaches, you know, and you know about the Lakotas and the Iroquois, but all the other names. You don't know anything about them, and you're not told about them, and it's not in your history books, and neither are we. And this land right here, just right up there, right up here on this lake, our democracy started, the peacemaker, right here. You're sitting on sacred ground right here. That's where it all started, what you call democracy. And then we did our best. We did our best. Give you direction. When you became uh, rebels, when you rebelled against your, your king back in 1775, meeting with Sal's here. There are meetings here. And you're not told about that. And at that particular meeting that was held in Albany, and what I'm talking about, 1775, all the Six Nation chiefs were up there for that meeting because they asked us to join them in a fight. And they said, we want you to help us fight our father. Our father they had a lot of complaints. And our, our leaders said, well, we know your father. We've been dealing with your father for a long time, and we also know you. And we don't think it's a good idea to get in the middle of a family fight, as you well know. They'll both turn on you, for sure. And so they said, we're going to step to the side. And they said at that time, and this is what's not in, not in your history book, they said in 1744 in Lancaster, Pennsylvania at the meeting, you advised us to make a union like yours. We are now taking your advice. And 62 members of the Continental Congress, United States, the new beginning of your country, said we are now taking your advice. We make a union like yours based on peace and equity power of union, the good minds. That was the beginning of your country, democracy. And one of our chiefs said to them at that time, <clears throat> they were having this meeting, a powerful meeting, 1775 treaty. One of our chiefs said to them, where's your women? Where's your women? And so just to give you some insight on, you know, when you take our position or take our, our democracy, it's a real democracy, and it's a working democracy between men and women. And uh, in the uh, structure of our Confederacy, the clan mother holds the title. She owns that title, the mother, clan mother. And she chooses the leaders. The mother, the women, choose the leader. It has to be agreed upon by consensus, by her family, but it's her initial choice. <clears throat> and I'm sure, I would say I'm very sure that very few women would have chosen the leader you have as president today give you some insight as to the responsibility and understanding of working as partners with men and women. Your partners, you can't, one can't work without the other. And so our structure is there. And the clan mother has the authority, the responsibility to remove that title if that title holder is not performing correctly. How about that? How'd you like to have that responsibility right now? 
Well, they didn't do that. And then you had men in chains. You had men in slaves. We said, what about those people over there? So, some stuff you didn't give up when you started. And it come back on you. It's come back on you really hard now. It's brought you to this position. Because you did things halfway. When you vote, and you vote that 1%, you know, 49 to 51 is a division. It's not an agreement. And that's what you're seeing now today. This division, it's amazing. But our, our leaders challenged them right at that time. They said, not a good idea. So he went halfway. And maybe, maybe this is an opportunity to get the whole way on this business. Because if you don't, you know, you're just going to go down. You can't, can't manage without it. You can't manage without working together. And so they, this whole uh, situation that we're looking at today is a uh, severe crisis that I would say is the survival of uh, human beings as a species. If you don't correct your direction right now, we're not going to survive as a species. And there's nothing that says that we should. I mean, if you just looked about you right here and just envisioned no people, zero, those trees still be there. The water still be there, grass still be here, but we won't. Maybe be peaceful then. Maybe that's where the peace is. But human beings have been given this great opportunity. If you don't use it, and uh, your responsibility to children, your responsibility to what we call seven generations. Seven generations is not, is not uh, a casual term for us. We literally try to see seven generations. And we're talking the 80-year uh, generation. You know, you like to shortcut everything. But in life, there's no shortcut. You have technology, and it's just how you use that technology. And like uh, my young friend over here said that when I when I take down a, uh, a hickory tree to make the stick that I have here, I, I plant hickory nuts to raise more trees. I just don't take the hickory. You return it, you keep it going. There's still opportunity to do that. So I think uh, coming up as a choice you're gonna be making it, I think that the generation that's standing here now, uh, my generation just about gone by now, but the next generation's in, uh, gonna de determine whether there's gonna be any of us left. Uh, 7.5 billion people in the world today. And when I was 20 years old, 1950, that was 2.5 billion people. And it took a long time to get there. And then within these 68 years, triple the population. I don't know whether you comprehend what that is. I don't know whether you understand what that means. That's an explosion of human life. And not enough teachers, not enough teachers for our young people. So they're out there now in the gangs. Nobody's looking after them. Everybody's worried about money coming in. Nobody's talking about seven generations. Nobody's worrying about those two. Where's your leaders? Where are your leaders? To look ahead. For the common good, not for Republicans or Democrats. 
for life itself. So, my, my hat off to these guys coming by with their wooden sticks. That's a tradition they're carrying. They're carrying that tradition. And uh, we're not going to give it up. We're not, not about to. So we're in it up to our ears. So how about you guys? How about that seven generations? How about looking after them? I think that's where we're at at this time. So just uh, a little insight to how we think. I thank you for coming here today. Done it. Don't forget these vendors. These guys here got a lot of good stuff. Hello, people. I was standing over here when Orrin started talking and the eagle flew right over these trees right near the lake. Five of us saw that eagle as soon as he started talking. I think that's a sign, a good sign. Just thought you might want to know that. Wonderful to see you. I stay with the horses. 